Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan! For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Many of the hymns which we sing actually have fascinating origin stories, especially many of the hymns we're going to be singing during this Lenten season. And in fact, what I'm going to do is as often as possible tell some of the stories of how many of these hymns came to be written. One such hymn is the hymn we just sang a few moments ago, The Old Rugged Cross, which was written by a Methodist itinerant preacher named George Bernard. Now, George Bernard was actually born in Youngstown. While working as a coal, um, he worked as a coal miner in his youth and then was called to the ministry. He worked as an itinerant preacher, meaning that he traveled around a lot from place to place. And in many of the places he traveled, he had a particular favorite verse which he quoted, John 3.16. When quoting John 3.16, he always seemed to have a vision of the cross. The cross always came to mind whenever he was quoting John 3.16. And on one particular occasion, as he was preaching and as the cross was coming into his mind, an original melody started to come through, a melody that he himself devised. Even though the melody seemed to come to him, the complete melody came to him right then and there, he couldn't really think of any words to go along with it. He struggled and he struggled to come up with something, but the only thing that he could think of was, I'll cherish the old rugged cross. And little by little, bits and pieces started to come to him. Every and, and so eventually, he had a complete song, which we now call the Old Rugged Cross. There's even more to the story. He sent the manuscript to a, um, he, he sent the manuscript to a publisher asking if, um, if his publisher could set, could set chords with a melody line. His publisher did so, and he returned the sheet music with the message, you will hear, <clears throat> you will hear from this song. And sure enough, over the years, that's what happened. That's what has happened. We have heard the song again and again, and it is especially meaningful for us. In fact, many people choose to have this song sung at their funerals as a reminder of where our hope really is. That someday when we die, we will go with Jesus, to be with Jesus, who died on the cross, to make that possible. It is also worth noting that, when George, that George Bernard actually wrote 300 other songs, but this is the one that is best known. And that when he was writing the song, and when he, was, and when he saw a vision of the cross while writing the song, he says, I saw Christ and the cross inseparable. I saw Christ and the cross inseparable. And indeed, that is what we are also reminded of today, 
that Jesus and the cross are inseparable. You can't talk about Jesus without talking about the cross. Because it is only through the cross that Jesus is able to achieve victory. Victory over death and victory over Satan. The victory over Satan being previewed by what we hear in today's gospel reading about Jesus being able to defeat the devil, especially being able to defeat the devil at his own game. Because the devil tried to tempt Jesus to sin, he tried to deceive Jesus, but Jesus was able to see right through his deceit, and so he defeated the devil. But it is also only through the cross that Jesus achieves victory, giving us grace and deliverance. It is only through the cross that we receive grace and we receive deliverance. And it all happens because of Jesus. When George Bernard, when George Bernard was, compl was complimented on, on having written the hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, he would frequently respond, I really didn't write it. I was merely the instrument God used. And just like George Bernard and the hymn was the instrument God used to, to broadcast a special message, the cross is the special instrument that God used to give us grace and deliverance. The grace we receive is the grace of having our sins forgiven as a free gift. The grace we receive is having been rescued from sin and the punishment for sin as a result of what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden, which we heard Harold read about just a few moments ago in the book of Genesis. We are, we are, we are given grace because we are forgiven. We are given grace because even though we are guilty, because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we are declared not guilty. We, are, we, are, we receive grace because, as Paul writes in Romans, how much more did God's grace and the grace that came, of the, came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Grace overflows to us today. Forgiveness overflows to us today. The chance to start over overflows to us today. The chance to start again overflows to us today. The chance to leave everything else behind and live a new life overflows to us today. The chance to leave everything we have done behind overflows to us today. The guilt of anything we have done is removed, and that overflows to us today. The hurt that others have done to us is all removed and overflows to us today. All of God's wonderful gifts overflow to us today. And it is all made possible by the death of Jesus. As I have been saying the last couple of weeks, the message of the cross is simple. Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus died on the cross for us to make grace possible and to make deliverance possible. We are delivered from the power of Satan. We do not need to fear the power of evil we do not need to fear the power of the devil. We do not need to fear anything harming us. We do not need to fear anything coming against us and winning because we know, we believe, that Jesus has already delivered us. Jesus has already rescued us. And because he has won victory, our victory is already complete. Our victory is already guaranteed. There is nothing that can come against us, nothing that can harm us, because Jesus has already won victory. There is nothing that can, that can try to convince us 
that God can't do everything and God can't do anything because we know and we believe that if God can raise his son from the dead, if God can win victory over sin and Satan, he can do anything. If God can win victory over death, he can do anything. If God can defeat all the powers of evil, he can do anything. And once again, we have this guarantee because Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross negating and nullifying the power of the devil. Now that's not to say, of course, that the devil is not still alive and active. Unfortunately, all you have to do is simply turn on the news and you can see the power of evil at work and active. You can see the power of temptation at work and active. But what we can say in the face of evil, what we can say in the face of any temptation is, you have lost, God has won. You have lost, God is already victorious. God has already won victory over the power of evil, and evil will not ultimately triumph because Jesus has ultimately triumphed. Therefore, we can be confident and we can be assured, not because we have any power ourselves to face evil, not because we have any power ourselves to defeat evil and temptation, because we don't. We don't have any power to defeat evil on our own. We don't have any confidence on our own to be able to defeat evil and sin. Only God can do that. Therefore, we trust in his power and we trust in what he has already promised, what he has already made possible. Victory. Victory through grace and victory through deliverance. But once again, we know that Satan is alive and active. And the greatest temptation Satan tries to use is to convince us that nothing God promises is true. The greatest temptation Satan tries to use against us, especially today, is to try to say, everything is hopeless, there is no hope. What we're experiencing right now is how things are always going to be. Satan's greatest temptation, and unfortunately, there are times when he succeeds. I can attest to this myself. Satan's greatest temptation is to say, God is not in control. God is powerless, therefore you are powerless. God doesn't care, so why should you care? God can't handle this, so you should just give up. But brothers and sisters, Jesus himself shows us what to do in the face of such temptations. Jesus said, away from me, Satan. And so we too say, away from me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Don't serve fear. Don't serve hopelessness. Don't serve paranoia. Don't serve any of those things because they come from Satan. Don't serve any kind of thought that says everything is hopeless, everything is out of control, because we, because we are promised, we are promised the opposite. God is in control. God brings hope. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we even pray that God would deliver us from such temptation. We pray that God would deliver us from evil, and what does this mean? As Martin Luther says, <clears throat> we also pray that God 
would not lead us into temptation. Again, as Martin Luther says in the small catechism, God tempts no one. We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory. And we, we know and we believe that, that these things have been overcome and we already have won the victory because Jesus has already won the victory. Everything God promised, everything God has promised has already happened. But do we believe it? Luther continues in explaining what but deliver us from evil means. We pray in this petition in summary that our Father in heaven would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, possessions and reputation. And finally, when our last hour comes, give us a blessed end and graciously take us from this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven. And once again, as we hear in the hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, and as we are reminded time and time again, this is already possible because Jesus has already won that victory. We are already destined to live with God forever because Jesus has made it possible by his death and resurrection. We further have this promise confirmed and guaranteed in baptism. As Martin Luther says, what, what benefits does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. If you are baptized, you are already rescued. If you are baptized, you are already forgiven. If you are baptized, you already have the promise confirmed, the promise that Jesus has won victory on your behalf. In just a few moments, we will be receiving Holy Communion together, which is a further confirmation of this victory as... As we receive Jesus' body and blood, we will be reminded of his victory, reminded of his sacrifice, how he broke his body and shed his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and we, we could be guaranteed eternal life and we could live in this life with hope. As, you, as, as in a few moments, we hear the story told of how Jesus, of, of how Jesus instituted communion Believe the words given and shed for you. Everything Jesus did, everything he has promised, is for you. Take it personally. God's grace is for you. God's forgiveness is for you. God's hope is for you. Eternal life is for you. Everything Jesus did, everything he has promised, is for you. So cherish the old rugged cross. Cling to the old rugged cross. Because it is through the cross that Jesus gives us hope, Jesus gives us grace, and Jesus promises us deliverance. In the cross, God can. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.